Hi, I'm Darren, and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. Well, I replaced the carrier null pot in my HW101. I finished all the alignment steps and got the transmitter to work. Let's check out the results. In the prior episode, I had to stop the transmitter alignment because the carrier null pot was malfunctioning. Here it is on the modulator board. It's really blocked in by this wiring harness and the heterodyne crystals. There's no way to take it out in one piece, and there's really no need to do so because it's going in the garbage anyway. So after using a desoldering tool on the terminals, I used a pair of wire cutters to sever the ground wire, then cut through the three terminals. These wire cutters are already chewed up, so using them to cut these three terminals is no big deal. With the terminals cut, I can easily pull them out of the way. Ah, that is, after I remove a bit of solder still hanging onto this one. The stem's too long to allow the pot to be removed, so off it comes too. And even with all that hacking, it's still a tight squeeze to pull what's left of it out. Of course, the pins on the replacement pot don't line up with the PC board holes, but it's easy enough just to bend them over slightly. Soldering is a bit tricky, there's very little room to get an iron into that space, but I was able to work it out fine. This whole process only took a few minutes, and I set the carrier balance and finished the rest of the transmitter alignment without any new issues. Now, let's get back in the lab and make some performance measurements. All right, I'm gonna perform a fairly standard test here on the HW101 to test out the sensitivity of the receiver. It's called the noise floor test, or sometimes the minimum discernible signal test. And I've run this test on my home-built HF receiver I showed and detail how to do it in, in uh, that episode for that project. So I'm not going to go through it in incredible detail here. I'll just go through the highlights. But essentially, I'm using a, a known standard, in this case my HP signal generator, that I can set the magnitude of the uh, RF signal and be able to determine at what level that signal is detectable above the ambient noise. And of course, you can hear right now, that's just ambient noise coming out of the uh, receiver, there's no, no signal going into it. So the procedure is very specific about what equipment to use. So uh, I don't have all that equipment. I've tried to follow it as best as I could. And I'm actually getting to use my meter here, the uh, AV3 that I repaired and reconditioned in a prior episode. This is connected right across the speaker output. I'm looking at low level AC audio level signal. This guy is perfect for trying to make this kind of a measurement. So I've got it set up right now, it's on 20 meters, and I've got the rig set per the uh, test spec to use the narrowest filter, so it's a CW filter, got that engaged. And then I had to fine tune the driver pre-selector and also the frequency here to try to get the maximum signal. So right now I got it set just to, I think, uh, minus 90 dBm, turn this down a bit. I've also got, I should say, a adjustable step attenuator in line between the signal generator and the HW101. I got 10 dB of additional attenuation. So really this is minus 100 dBm going into the radio right now. And so like I say, I got the AV3 across the speaker output and then I tuned the driver pre-selector and the frequency to try to maximize that signal. As you can see, it bounces around quite a bit, so it's never going to be exact. So I'm ready to set the equipment to make the actual measurement. And what I'll do, I'll just show on screen now a zoomed in uh, image of the meter for how the test roughly looks when you run it. And because this is very sensitive, the needle's going to bounce around a fair amount and it's not going to be an exact uh, measurement. But essentially, what I'm doing is setting the noise coming out of the speaker just loud enough to put that needle right around uh, minus 6 dB on the scale and then I adjust the signal level on the signal generator to just hit about minus 3 dB uh, for the RF going into the receiver and as, as you see here as I turn the signal off and then back on a couple times you can see relatively what's happening once I know what that signal strength uh, is to do that then that's my minimum discernible signal. And of course I have to subtract 10 dB from that because I've got a step attenuator in line. But that's essentially how that works. So I did the test and here, let me turn the uh, noise down a little bit so I can come through on the camera a little louder. And I did 80 meter, 40 meter, 20 meter, 15 meter, and 10 meter bands. All the bands, of course, 
selectable on the rig and I'll show the results on screen and they're not too bad for an old rig like this and don't I don't have fresh vacuum tubes in it I've tuned it as best as I possibly could uh, based upon the age of the tubes and everything else that's in there the best performing band was 15 uh, meters at minus 124 dBm and 80 was the weakest at minus 104 but still strong enough that you could easily hear CW and single sideband on any given evening on, on 80 meters. So all in all, pretty happy with uh, how this receiver is performing. All right, and the next set of tests that I want to do is take a look at the transmitter output and see just how clean or not clean it might be. And so one of the first gadgets that I've got hooked up here is my Heathkit SB610. Now this is the first episode where I've shown this guy. This is a item that I restored about two or three years ago. And it's on the surface, it looks like an oscilloscope with about nine controls on the front of it. And it's not really a laboratory instrument. It's just a qualitative device that lets you take a look at the transmitted signal output and see if there's any gross anomalies. And so that, that's what I'm going to do here. Now, um, I've also, of course, have the transmitter connected to a dummy load, and it goes through this guy. So the output comes out of the... HW101 goes through a, a little detector uh, strip in here and then continues onto the dummy load. So it's just sampling with that little detector strip, a little bit of the RF, and then it shows it on uh, the Y axis on the screen. And uh, I've got it all configured here. And the first test that I'm going to do is look at the quality of just the CW signal, just the straight CW uh, carrier, essentially. I've already got the HW101 tuned up. Uh, for 40 meters for the maximum output I could get. And so this next shot, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to a second camera so we can take a closer look at the screen. All right, I've repositioned the camera so we can get a closer view of the screen on the SB610. And I'm going to switch the HW101 over to CW mode. And you might be able to hear a very faint audio tone. That's not the transmitter section transmitting. That's just a local audio oscillator kind of bleeding through even though the key's not pressed. But what I'm going to do now is press the key and there we clearly see a continuous wave uh, RF signal coming out of the HW101 and by itself it's not that interesting but what I can do here is rapidly key the uh, transmitter to simulate high-speed Morse code and we can look at the quality of the CW signal. Now unlike um, what you might think you don't want a perfect square wave coming out of a CW transmitter. You want a little bit of rounding of those initial uh, leading edges and trailing edges because if you had a perfect square wave, if you remember your mathematics, you'd have a crap ton of harmonics there. So you want a little gradual lead up. Now there's actually ways to quantify that and measure it better, but you should see here when I do this, you'll see that rounded edge. So let me give this a try. Now, unfortunately, I can't uh, set the sweep on the uh, SB610 to trigger exactly on the, uh, the Morse code. Now, if I had a keyer that was running at constant speed, I might be able to do that. But I think, nonetheless, you should have seen there those rounded edges. Let me do that again. So that looks decent. Uh, it's definitely not a square wave, so we're seeing what should be a little bit of round uh, edges there, which that will help knock down some of those harmonics. The next test I can do is actually look at the single sideband transmission and the SB610 has a single tone and two tone generator output that I can feed right into the microphone input of the HW101 and take a look at the quality of the single sideband stages. Now with the single tone, which I'll turn on in a moment, what we want to see here is basically a signal that looks very similar to the CW carrier, meaning we don't want any other modulation on there. We want to see just a continuous waveform. So let me turn on the uh, single tone output and then I'll key the transmitter. Now I can uh, adjust the sweep to try to get a better view of any weird modulation there. It looks like there isn't any. That looks like it's continuous. So that's what it should look like. All right, so let's look at the two tone test now. Now the single tone that we just looked at is around 1500 hertz. Um, the added tone is around 1950 hertz, so there's no common uh, harmonic between the two, and we should see double tone modulation. So let me switch the SB610 over to that, and then key the transmitter. 
Now, this one needs a little bit of fine tuning because I have to try to get this, the sink lined up. And there we go. Now, I also, let me give the transmitter a chance to rest here for a moment. I also have to adjust the microphone input so that I don't overdrive the uh, amplifier and saturate um, the stage and make it non-linear. So let me key it back up again. And there is something here that does concern me a bit because I don't really see a good sine wave type output here. So that's what you'd expect to see. And it looks a little flat top. I know this is hard to try to get dialed in here. And I'm going to have to give the transmitter uh, a few seconds to rest here. Now this is really low power. It's only maybe 10 watts or so coming out. So I'm not really taxing the finals very much, but still let, let them cool off here a little bit before I key it again. So here we go one more time. Try to get that to stay on screen. Uh, there, that's about as good as I'm gonna get. And you can see it looks like it might be a little flat topped and I'm trying not to overdrive the transmitter like I say. So um, that doesn't look too alarming. It's uniform at least, meaning there aren't peaks that are way higher or lower than the other one. So that tends to indicate that the carrier is well suppressed and there's no uh, other funkiness going on there. But uh, the final test I'll do here, I will just connect, connect up the mic and speak into it, and we'll look at how it's actually modulating an audio single sideband signal. All right, and I'll key up the mic now, and this is what the single sideband output looks like. Now, this is probably the hardest plot to look at and really dig into it. You can see some gross defects if the uh, waveform doesn't look like it's reaching highs and lows and if it's a uh, flat topping, but this looks pretty good, and also notice... When I stop speaking, there's no output. So that's good. There's not supposed to be because there's no carrier there. Now, a better test, of course, would be to look at the output on a spectrum analyzer. And that's what I'm going to try to do next. Here's my home-built spectrum analyzer. And I've got the input to it coming from my RF power tap. And you can kind of see it at the top of the screen here. But this is a little gizmo that I built several months ago. And I do have a video that I put together showing how um, I constructed it and what it does. Uh, it's in line in between the HW101 and the dummy load. The dummy load is off screen. It's a 40 dB power tap, which means whatever signal is passing through here to the dummy load, there's a sample here at 40 dB down from the power. That goes into the input of the SA, and I've got the input attenuator set for an additional 30 dB of attenuation. So what we'll do here next is I'll take a look at the CW transmission and the single sideband transmission and see if there's anything of interest in the output signal. I've zoomed in on the screen now and this is what the output of the SA looks like without the transmitter transmitting. This guy over here, that's the zero spur. We can ignore that. That's just an artifact of the way the SA is built. And there's a few uh, noise uh, pips coming through here. A couple um, spurs that I've never been able to get filtered out, but that's okay because as we'll see here in a minute, the magnitude of the signals we're most interested in are going to be the primary one, which is at 7.1 megahertz. That's what I have the HW101 tuned to. Then we're going to look for the second harmonic and the third harmonic and so on, and we want those to be suppressed at least 40 dB from the primary signal. That's the Heath kit specification and each division on the screen is 10 dB. So let me key the transmitter and I have a gain adjustment on the SA and I'll try to get the primary pip at the very top of the screen. Alright so there we go and this guy here that's the second harmonic and that's five divisions down so that's 50 dB. So that's well within the specification and there's no third or, or larger, well actually the larger is probably off screen, but there's no third there that's rising above the noise floor. So that looks really good. For this next test I want to take a look at just how much carrier leakage there is on single sideband mode. And what I'll do is I will key the transmitter with the mic uh, gain control set all the way down. So there's no input coming into the uh, uh, mic preamplifier, so we'd be just looking at the carrier signal that's coming through. And just to double check that I've got it calibrated correctly for the vertical axis, I'm going to go back to CW mode and key it up and then readjust my IF gain control to put the peak in CW mode at the top of the gradical. Okay, now I'm going to switch it to lower sideband mode. Take the mic, and again, I've got the mic gain, I'm going to set the mic gain, rather, all the way down and key it. 
and we can see right here that's the carrier coming through and lower sideband so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55 dB down that's pretty good but I'll go to uh, upper sideband mode and ooh it's not the same and that's actually one of the tricky things here I'll switch it back to lower sideband back to upper sideband and it's one of those tricky things I say because in the assembly manual Heathkit says it's kind of difficult to adjust that carrier null to get actual uh, balance between lower sideband and upper sideband and I thought I had it pretty close when I was following the spec but um, obviously off a little bit so I'll tweak that and see if I can get it to balance a little better but still it looks like it's performing within specification the last test that I wanted to attempt to do here was to take a look at the difference between the upper sideband and lower sideband transmission signals. And in reality, I'm asking a bit too much for my home-built SA. Um, the uh, smallest or the tightest or the narrowest, I guess you could say, resolution filter that I have is 30 kilohertz. So um, when I key the transmitter here in lower sideband and then again in upper sideband, you'll see there's really not that much difference and I would have expected or would expect with a tighter resolution filter I'd be able to see the actual sideband so here we go so here's lower sideband as you can see it's just to the right of the center of the screen and here's upper sideband so I just can't um, zoom in tight enough I, like I say I don't have a small enough resolution filter to be able to see much of a difference all right, that's a wrap for this episode. Now, ideally, I'd like to get all the remaining work done here in one final episode for this project, but I got a fair amount of work ahead of me. Most of it's cosmetic. I do need to paint and do some repairs on the speaker cabinet, uh, same cabinet that holds the power supply on the inside. I have to refab. There's a wooden support for the speaker in the front and paint uh, the front uh, grill and, of course, paint the cabinet itself. And the big project is painting the top and bottom case halves for the HW101 itself, and they are in terrible shape. Um, I've been experimenting with a couple different techniques to remove the paint from this aluminum without damaging it. I've got one right here that seems to work fairly well, but it takes uh, some elbow grease, so it may take me a while to get to a point where I can get these painted. In addition to the cosmetics, I'd really like to get this on the air, make a few contacts, and get some signal reports and see just what my transmitted signal sounds like on the other end. And I may even try to use that RF power tap with my SDR and see if I can get some additional quality readings and what the signal looks like. Thanks very much for watching. As always, I'm hoping you're enjoying this series, and if you do have questions or comments, leave them in the box below. So until next time, bye for now.